Okay, next up is talking about secondary dominance. Before we do that, let's again review major diatonic harmony. Let me just close this up for a second. Again, what we have is everything based off of a major scale. I still have a B-flat major scale notated here. B-flat, C, D, E-flat, F, G, A. Those are the notes. Those are the scale degrees represented by what? Arabic numbers. And these are the Roman numerals representing harmony. What we're talking about right now is major seventh harmony. Seventh chords built in thirds. Remember, these thirds are either major sounding or they are minor sounding. We talked about the Roman numerals and the difference between the major and minor third sounds. What we didn't talk about are chord symbols, and that's what these are up here. How do you represent these chords in jazz music? When you get a lead sheet, you'll have a melody, and then you'll have chord symbols above, and you need to know what notes to play for those. So if we were in the key of B flat and we saw a B flat major seven chord, we would know it was the one chord, and we would know that we would play B flat, D, F, and A. And we went over that. If we saw, I will move this out of here, if we saw a C minor seven chord, we would know that's the two chord. So we're calling the chord symbol is going to be represented. The first, the note, the letter of the musical alphabet is going to be whatever this bottom note is, whatever that root note, note is in your scale. So the two chord in the key of B flat is C minor seven because it's minor sounding. The three chord is also minor. So notice that the bottom note is a D. So we call that D minor seven. That dash represents minor. The four chord, well, what's the fourth note in a B flat major scale? That's E flat, and it's a major chord, so we represent that chord symbol with E flat major seven. The five chord is what we call a dominant chord, and a dominant chord is a chord that is represented by the F. Let's see. Why is this not working for me now? Um, sorry about this. Is F, A, C, and E flat. So you have major, minor, minor. Remember, the five chord really wants to go to one. We talked about that. The six chord is minor, and the bottom note is a G, so we call it G minor seven. And the seventh chord is that crazy half diminished chord, and we call that A minor seven. So no matter what major key we're in, whatever, what major scale, we're building this diatonic major harmonic universe. The bottom note of the chord or the root of the chord is going to be what the chord symbol is called. So let's, for example, pretend we're in the key of D. The notes in a D major scale are D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Remember, there's an F sharp and a C sharp. So if we do the pattern, whole, whole would be F sharp, half, whole, whole, whole would be C sharp, D, half step. Well, what would the one chord be? Well, it would be major, and we would call it D major seven. What would the two chord be? Well, the second note in the D major scale is E, so we would call it E minor seven. What's the three chord? Well, the third note in an F major scale is F sharp, so we would call it F sharp minor seven. The four chord we would call G major seven. Why? Because if we build the chord, it's going to be a major sounding chord. The five chord is going to be A seven, it's a dominant chord. The six chord is going to be B minor seven. The seventh chord would be C sharp minor seven flat five. And those are what the chord symbols look like. So that's just a quick review of that diatonic major seven harmonic universe, what it would look like if you had to notate it. Now let's talk about secondary dominance. As we've discussed, the, um, let me see if I can get this back up and running again here. Here we go. So the one and the five chord are very much um, related to one another, right? So five, like if we're in the key of C, here's five. Because if you look at, and I wish that these, this piano thing would stay up here because it's really bothering me. Um, let's 
if I could. If, no, that doesn't work. Let me close this up for a second, folks. I'll get this to stay in a second. I apologize. Should be a little bit more organized about this. I'll put this down here. Okay, so here we go. So in the key of C, here's the one chord. Okay. And the five chord is G, B. So notice it shares two of the same notes, G and B, but we also have D and F, right? So that's the five chord, G, B, D, and F. Now I'm playing it in an inversion, okay? But I want to show you that this F wants to go to E, and this D wants to go to C, right? So here's... So they're just really gravitationally pulled to one another. You want it, they want to resolve to one another. Whatever key you're in, that in this five chord, that seven, that flat seven wants to resolve to the third of the one, and the fifth wants to resolve to the root of one. Okay? So every single one chord in every single major scale has a five chord. So if we're looking at the key of G major down here, right? The notes in G major are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Okay, so here's the one chord in the key of G sharp, I mean G, and the five chord in this um, particular key is D. So D, F sharp, they're in the same notes, right? C and A, so see how they want to resolve? Okay, so let's look at the next note in a G major scale. It's A, okay? I mean, sorry, it, yeah, it's A. It's A minor seven. Here's the one chord, which is G major. Two quarters, A, C, E, G. Well, guess what? That A, as we were fooling around, is married to E. One, two. So a fifth from the A is E. So that it, that E7 chord, if we're in the key of G, wants to resolve really to some type of A. They have a strong relationship to one another. Okay? So we have that A minor 7. If I played an E7 chord, which would be this, which is E, G sharp, B, and D, it wants to resolve to 1. So a fifth above every single um, scale degree in a G major scale is the secondary dominant of that scale. So again, in the D, in the key of, C, of G, the natural five dominant is D7, but in the in the secondary dominant for A for the second scale degree is E. So we call that the five of two. What's the third note in a G major scale? It is B. Okay, so let's look at B in a B major scale. What is a fifth up from B in a B major scale? F sharp. F sharp wants to resolve to B. In, okay, if you're in a B major scale, F sharp wants to resolve to B. So if you saw an F sharp seven chord, which would be F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, E, right? If you saw an F sharp seven chord in the key of G and it resolves to B minor seven, Let's look at that, right? That is the secondary dominant of three. So we call that the five of three. The fourth note is C. What's a fifth up from C? G. So if we see a G7 chord in the key of G, we'd call that the five of four, etc. cetera. A D, one, two, three, four, five, five. So if we saw an A7 chord, if we saw this chord, we know that it wants to resolve to some type of D chord. Okay, the sixth chord is E. So if we saw B7, we would call it the five of six. The seventh chord is F sharp. If we saw a C sharp seven chord, it wants to resolve to um, F sharp seven. We call it the five of seven. So again, if we see chords that are dominant, if we see dominant chords, we don't call these secondary dominants. If we saw a C sharp minor seven in the in the key of G major, we would not call that the five of seven. It has to be dominant. 
Okay, and that's the chord symbol for dominant. So secondary dominance, this is the important thing. Secondary dominance resolve to diatonic notes in whatever major harmonic universe you're in. That's important, okay? So, because tritone substitutions and substitute dominance do not resolve to diatonic notes. So again, all the diatonic notes in a G major scale are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So any dominant chord that would re resolve to an a, some type of A, some type of B, some type of C, D, E, or F sharp is a secondary dominant. Let me just do one more quickly for you, and then in the next video, I will go over tritone substitution. So in the key, let's look at the key of F for a second. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, okay? So the five of one is obviously C7, right? So C, E, G, B flat wants to go to one, right? What's the five of two? Well, the five of two would be some D7. So D, F sharp, right? C, and it wants to resolve to... I mean, you, sometimes it'll resolve, resolve to a major chord, but if it resolves to minor, it can do that, right? In... The A, right, what's the 5 of 3? Some is E7. If you saw an E7 in your music, okay, it, the next chord might be an, an A minor chord, okay? B flat, what's the 5 of 4? It's the fifth note would be F. So if you saw an F7 chord, it wants to resolve to that B flat. Okay, the 5 of 5 would be F7, so you'd see. Okay, the 5 of 6 would be some type of A7. Okay, and the 5 of 7 would be um, some type of B7. Now, we talked about this in pop music. Remember, if you're writing a song and you're in the key of C, and you're going to go to the 6 chord, what you can do, instead of just going 1, Five of six, right? One, five of six is E, some type of E chord, and go to six. I do the five of four before I go to four, right? I go to five. So what's the five of four? I go to some type of. Maybe I want to go to two. I could play the five of two, and then go to two. kind of add some more color to your music. Those are secondary dominance.